But what we're going to do today, gang, let me, let me bring you around. So, hey, we're going to revisit masks. Um, and I want to revisit masks uh, because Michael and some of you may um, be uncomfortable in a mask that doesn't have a nose piece because without the nose piece you've got um, and you're wearing glasses this helps bring it closer to your face of course some of us are just having a heck of a time with a mask in general uh, that's Michael's this is my current mask I managed to get it on And I get it tucked with my glasses on top here and then they don't fog up. But Michael's glasses are a different shape and he has a bigger face and remember I had to make him that bigger mask so that it would go out his cheeks and um, high, high enough up his, his nose and under his chin to fit properly and get a nice tight fit. So, um, Mine was just a quick, simple mask in the easiest ways I could give you. And then I've have a, had a few thoughts on uh, updates on it and thought I would share those with you today. So it's sort of mending Monday, but you know, it's more an addition to what we had before. So some variations that I've done since uh, I made my first one and may have mentioned in the previous video. Um, I've got one pinned up here ready to sew. I've got the elastic here from the bottom fold up a quarter inch. And we're gonna fold this edge back around a quarter inch here. And so I've got the elastic way down and um, when you can see these for real, there's the folds. And I've put the elastic within a quarter inch of the upper fold. And when we're done, they're going to be a little more like this. They're not gonna be right in the corners. They're gonna be a quarter inch from each end. And what uh, happens there is for a lot of people, that brings the mask tighter to the cheek so you don't have um, other outside air seeping in behind the mask. So that's a kind of an update from before. This is my most worn mask. I've given away most of the ones I've made to people who need, need them. Because I have a few too. But what I'm going to say is if you have, are finding you're having issue and you want to put a nose piece in, you can take the masks I showed you how to make and your handy dandy seam ripper. And starting here in the middle, you can unpick that top stitching we did to close that hole about three inches to each side. And um, I'm going to quick unpicking. I just kind of cut through a stitch every inch or so. Not every stitch. When you think you've gone about as far as you need to do, breaking each one of those stitches. Um, I go to the other side from where I cut the stitches and I'll cut the sort of at the first end. I, you need about three and a half inches open here to get a nose piece in here. So we're going to repair this one with a nose piece. So you can cut that and then just pull and it kind of runs like a zipper and it will open for you. 
So now I've got that lovely opening here. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna find the middle. And I'm gonna just mark it with a pin. Unless you have different Novus pieces or using something you found around the house. Um, our nose pieces are three and a half inches. And a kind of a, they're half a centimeter, just a little smaller than a quarter inch. So that's the aluminum nose pieces we have. They're quite nice. They're very lightweight. And um, what we have to do is we now have to create a casing for it. So I've got the foot um, on this machine and I've moved the needle all the way to the right, giving me a bit of a quarter inch. So um, I've got beige thread in, so I'm hoping you can see that. So I've got that middle part and then um, middle marked part of me and then half of three and a half. is 1.75 from the middle. So I'm gonna go uh, one and seven eighths out from the middle. Give myself just a little extra space there. I'm gonna put a pin there and I'm gonna measure this side. One point seven eighths out so i've given myself sort of an eighth of an inch grace room on either end because um when we fold that there needs to be a little bit of room for the nose piece to move if you do this exactly three and a half it would be too tight in the fabric and create a little pressure so what i'm going to do you might not be able to see it awesome from the angle you're at but i'm going to come back in and i'm going to come on that top stitching that we used to sew it closed and then i'm going to sew a three-eighths of an inch box along here back up here then i'm going to insert the nose piece in there then i'm going to turn this around in the machine and i'm going to top stitch the hole closed all in one motion Drop that needle in, lift the foot, and then I'm going to stitch down below the top stitching line, and probably from the top of the edge. Uh, I think a half inch will do nicely. So I'm measuring on the fly, as you can see there. And I think uh, when we're good at this, we'll be able to judge by number of stitches. So I just did a needle up down there and I'm going to pivot. Then hopefully you've pivoted in such a way that there's some line you can follow on your uh, sewing table and there is for me so remember I'm going to sew all the way to the end of where I want to put in the nose piece I'm going to do one more needle up down there and I am going to Pivot 
and come up to that edge where I unpicked. And just to be sure that I've got that end closed, I'm just going to sew back a little bit on there. So I'm going to turn this around and I'll try to do an aerial for you. So you can see I've gone in and I've sewn that little funky box down and around. And now I can take this nose piece. I'm going to push it in to the bottom. Move this just a wee bit. Maybe I'll have a better angle. So I'm just using my fingernail to make sure that I've pushed that nose piece all the way to the bottom of that box. Because now I'm just going to turn and top stitch that closed roughly where it was earlier. and forth here because I don't know if we've got knots programmed into this one so there we go I picked it open and put the nose bar in it so uh, kind of amending Monday but kind of just a you know an amendment more or less so I've got that piece in there now so Right, I can wear the mask that I've been wearing. Sorry. And push that down and around. I don't mind wearing mine without a nose piece. So I'm going to save the nose pieces for Michael. <laughs> there we go. So still rides under my glasses and they don't fog up but right now what i find is it's a lot warmer in here because there's no heat escaping out through the top which is what uh fogs up your poor glasses but there you go so now i've got that bent in there uh probably before i wash it i might actually flatten them out Give it a little kerplunk and throw it in the wash in my laundry bag so that the elastics don't get all beaten and smashed up. Some people don't like the elastic around the ear. Um, this one here, you can do the elastic, um, just put a longer piece, but instead of going from here to here, you put your elastic from here to here and then another one on the bottom from there to there um so quarter inch elastic might hold better to your head and it you, but it does use a considerably more elastic than around your ears but it the longer you have to wear this the more uncomfortable people could, may find the ear pieces so you can kind of see a lot more elastic there. I love that this elastic's bright yellow. Makes this so much easier to show you. So there you go. That's a fixing it in. From where it's attached to where it's attached on on this mask, this piece here is 12 inches. Yeah, see, and this one, it's hard to see, but perhaps you can see. The elastic is two different lengths on this mask. So this one up here is considerably longer than this one down here. So the lower one appears to be about 10 inches. And this one's about 12 inches. So uh, there's two kinds of people. Those who test and those who wish they had. <laughs> and you don't want to be the, I wish I had tested this and make a hundred masks and then find out the elastic is too, too long or too short or pinches your face or hurts your head well, the good news about making them yourself right so I have another mask here it's already pinned up the way I like the mask 
I'm going to actually show the, sew this one for our edification today. sure where the elastic is in that one I couldn't feel it Alright so we've got this thing sewed sewed I'm gonna turn it who remembers the thumb thing even if there's only one seam I put my thumb in fold it back on the seam allowance get a good corner happening there and take it off my thumb and push it on my finger I'm gonna do that on both sides because I like good sharp corners without too much fooling around all right so here's the other variation I was telling you about a quarter inch up from the bottom and oh uh, what did you stuff your sloth with polyfill polyfill we carry it Lana so and then when I turn that quarter inch edge there under and fold that top closed you see it's a quarter inch from that corner Let's, oh, I'm just going to pick up all my pins. <laughs> I usually have a magnetic pin cushion and it's not normally my um, tripod. <laughs> all right, so. All right, everyone, here's, we're back to the original one with the, that nice single flat center pleat. And what I'm going to do is top stitch around it and put the um, nose piece in it rather than unpicking. Okay, so probably if I was smart, you guys, I would have marked off the center on this first and then one and seven eighths from each edge like we did in the amended mask but um, we'll just make do right now Um, for my friends in the audience, yeah, we did 1.78 of an inch to either end of the, from center point. I mean, if you if you don't care over much, you could call that just call that two inches. <laughs> so there. where I want to be so remember we can turn those two quarter inches in and pull that while we're here and to insert on the fly a nose piece okay I'm going to instead of measuring down I'm counting the stitches here. It's like five. Okay. Look, five on the other way. So I'm going to pivot here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five. Pivot. Um, some of your machines are programmable, you guys. If you know that now. And you know how you can program it to do five stitches. You won't have to like do it like I did. Just kind of by guess and by gosh. I'm not too worried about these right now. Where's my needles? Call that. Oh, dude, I missed that thing, but let's call it anyway. I just want them to see which way to go. So I'm gonna kind of <laughs> did a weird smiley face. And I think I'm gonna double back to that edge there. You can swing this around. But I'm I'm not putting the nose piece in you guys. This is for me and I don't want one. <laughs> <laughs> but well, okay, maybe I, this is the one I give, I'm going to send to my sister. So insert that little nose piece in, in there. Push it all the way down to your top stitching. And if I had measured that out first, you know what? I would have started here, Leah. I would have started here and gone down and around and up, mm. across, yeah. down, did that and then just come back here. That would have been easier. That that would be the cleanest way. It always takes me three to know the perfect way to make one. And right now we're on at version one. <laughs> and then I effectively sealed that in there. Oh, there's, I have to reverse stitch because this doesn't, it's not built in. Trim it. So, okay, recap. Instead of doubling back here, you guys, start here. Measure this first. Pull that under, go around, up to here. Then count however many stitches down is your half inch. Go across there, back up that same, close the hole. That is one stitching, no double back. It's pretty tidy. Tight and tidy, just the way I love it. So there you go.